Good morning, church. Um, Assistant Pastor Marcus here, and I'm excited to continue our look at 3rd John. Uh, yesterday, we talked a little bit about how this book is really kind of the basis of, of, of the, the way we treat missionaries uh, by being hospitable to them. And today, we're going to look at a guy who did the opposite of what Gaius did in terms of how he treated um, missionaries. We're going to look at verses 9 and 10 this morning and meet a guy named Diotrephes. Verse 9, I wrote to the church, but Diotrephes, who loves to have the preeminence among them, does not receive us. Therefore, if I come, I will call to mind his deeds, which he does, prating against us with malicious words. And not content with that, he himself does not receive the brethren and forbids those who wish to, putting them out of the church. So there's a pretty stark contrast here between how John described uh, Gaius and what he was doing in being hospitable to people and how John describes what Diotrephes is doing or rather not doing. Um, Gaius was hospitable and, and, and giving and Diotrephes is, is really almost malicious in the way that he treats people coming to him. And, and these two things, are, they are both, they're both heart sourced. What I, what I mean by that is that um, that Gaius Gaius's heart was was saturated in truth, right? John, all of John's writings go back to truth, knowing the truth, and from that truth comes love, and from that love comes proper action and loving action. And so Gaius, because he's being hospitable, that's not because he's just a neat guy; it's because he's sourced in truth. Um, his heart is steeped in it, and he works at it. Diotrephes clearly doesn't. His heart is set on something else. John says that he's set on preeminence. Um, he's not, you know, John doesn't go so far as to call him a false teacher as such, but he clearly doesn't have a full grasp of the truth in order to, to build that, that fruit in his life. He doesn't show um, the kind of love that we know comes from the truth. His heart is ill, and, and so his words are ill, and so his actions are ill. The thing, it cascades and, and the real issue here uh, that John's getting after is not that, not that Diotrephes was mean to him. He was. He was, you know, lying and slandering John. But that's not what John's, John's worried and, and upset about. What John's concern is, is that by his actions, Diotrephes is inhibiting the spread of the gospel. We talked yesterday about how the people that, that Gaius has been uh, receiving are, are their missionaries, the people going out for his name's sake, for the name of Jesus Christ and for sharing the gospel. And so Gaius has been receiving those, whereas we see here that Diotrephes was not only not receiving those, but he was he was kicking people out of the church who were receiving them. And that, that may even include Gaius. We don't know that for sure, but it's possible that Gaius had been kicked out of this church by Diotrephes um, because he had been hospitable um, to these missionaries. And so there's something really, really wrong with Diotrephes' heart here um, in his desire. And, and, I, and I've seen this in other churches in places, um, and it still happens this day in many places, where you have somebody who is, who is entrenched with their own importance in the body and, and will do everything in their power to, to separate anybody else from having any authority in the body. Um, you know, pastors get undermined by people who've been there for a long time or whatever it is, um, or you can have somebody who kind of goes rogue and just like denounces everything except themselves to make themselves seem trustworthy. And it can just get to be a really ugly situation. Um, but, but John's not worried about the personal effect of this. He's worried about the gospel effect of what Diotrephes is doing. Um, and it's caused by Diotrephes' desire, he says, for preeminence. It's, just an, it's an interesting word. It's the it's a Greek botuo, um, which we only see in one other place in the New Testament. It's in Colossians 1.18. I'll read that for you, Colossians 1.18. This is talking about, it's Paul writing about Jesus Christ. And he says, And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he may have the preeminence. So the only other time that we see the word preeminence used, it's to tell us that Jesus Christ alone should have preeminence. And so to see John say that uh, uh, Diotrephes wants preeminence, that, that suggests that he wants to be, um, not that he wants Jesus' position, but that he wants to have the authority and the decision-making and the respect and the love that only Jesus truly deserves. So I don't think that... Um, Diotrephes is necessarily an antichrist um, or even anti-gospel, but he's certainly anti-spreading the gospel, and that is bad. Um, and so what he desires to be, uh, be preeminent is, is very different from what it, what it is to seek 
um, real leadership in the church body. As we go, if you went and looked at the uh, qualifications for eldership um, in in Titus and in uh, First Timothy, you would see that um, there's a certain amount of humility that's required there um, when you're seeking after that kind of office. And Diotrephes does not have that at all. He's he's anti um, missionary, anti the spread of the gospel because of how he's treating these people. And so, what do we do about that? What does John say about that? John says he's going to come straighten it out. Um, now, John's an old guy at this point, you know, but I still imagine he's pretty fearsome. Um, sons of thunder and all that. Uh, but but John says, I'm going to come straighten it out. I'm going to bring this to mind. And 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 it's partly because of his authority, his, uh, his eldership, where right? he has the, the positional authority to do so. But I think his heart is more of it because he's a protector of truth. Right? John is constantly talking about truth and how important that is and how that's what we that's what we bind around in Jesus Christ is the truth of who he is and was. And I think John is not offended for himself. He's offended for the gospel. And so that's a good lesson for us not to be seeking after preeminence and to have our primary concern not be what is my authority and what is or even what is my role or how can I make what I want happen or how can I keep things from changing um, or any of those things. Our focus has got to be always and fully on the gospel. We can't seek preeminence, especially not over the gospel itself. You know, Diotrephes has an opportunity to love people who are loving Jesus and he chooses not to. He actively works against them. And, and that's what happens when we're not in love with the truth. We can be real stumbling blocks. So it's not just, Diotrephes, I'm sure he knew the truth, but he wasn't in love with it. He didn't fully embrace it. He wasn't living it out. And so I, w- I would caution all of us, you know, I look at myself a lot to think, do I, am I fully in love with the truth? Do I love the honesty about who God is and was and who Christ is and was and who the Holy Spirit is and was and, and what it means to live out a life um, that reflects that? And along for the day that I, that I can say yes all the time to that, but that won't come until the end. But um, in, in the meantime, it's important to be checking ourselves and thinking, am I, am I diatrophying right now? <laughs> I coined that term for you. Um, you know, am I, am I actively working against what God is after? You've got, you know, see the sticker behind me here. It says, it says, what does God want to say to his people? And I keep that there, not because I'm so holy, um, but because I have to remind myself constantly when I'm prepping for devotions or, or, or uh, teaching on Sunday or a Bible study or whatever, I have to constantly remind myself to be seeking what God wants and not what I want, not my own preeminence. And so, you know, if it takes a sticky note or a hundred sticky notes or whatever, um, I encourage you to do it. Whatever it takes to remember that God is at the top and has to stay there. Um, And we get we get we get to rejoice because of that, Um, because then we know that truth is true and not made up by some dude named Diotrephes. (laughs) So let me pray real quick and we'll continue on uh, the next couple of days. Lord, I thank you that we uh, uh, we get to know the truth, and I thank you that you have given us the tools um, in the Word, but also in those other believers around us to help us to recognize when we are not walking in the truth. Um, and I thank you for the ability that we have to hold each other to account um, in love so that we can fully and better support you and be a better united body who loves you fully and with our whole hearts. We love you, Lord, so much. We thank you for this time together. Amen. We have two more days in 3rd John. We're going to look at a couple more verses tomorrow, and I'll, I'll see you then, so check in in the morning.